welcome to the Friendly Aussie Hello. Podcast. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Friendly Aussie Podcast. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. And we're here with the Global Hemp Movement at Global Hemp Movement. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm very good. Thanks for having me here. Yeah. What's your What's your name? Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. So, hi. My name's uh, Alexander Gorshenin. I, uh, it's a bit of a mouthful. Where's the last name from? Gorshenin. Just... Yeah, that's the Russian name. Ah. Yeah. I do like Da, da, da. da, da don't da. worry. I have no problem with Russians. It's okay with me. That's good. I'm glad. Yes, yes, yes. Us Slavs, we respect Russians because, well, Russian dominate us most yes, of the time. motherland is there. Yeah, motherland. <laughs> there has to be some kind of respect there. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, so my name's Alexander. I started the Global Hemp Movement uh, back in 2006, beginning of 2016. Um, I, it's an oh, interesting... Four years, four and yeah, a half. Yeah, about four years, actually. Yeah, it's, That's gone, cool. it's gone quick, actually. It's really gone quick. And I suppose I started... Well, it started really out of... Uh, <laughs> I went to a seminar uh, down at Byron Bay for the Freedom Summit. And there was a lady at the front of the seminar with this table... Uh, of all these different hemp products. And I mean, I, I knew about hemp, like I'd had a lot of cannabis throughout my life and I knew that you could make rope out of hemp and I knew you could make clothes out of hemp, you know, the sort of stuff that Bob Marley would wear. But when I saw this table with all these different things on it, like seeds and oil and protein and, and hempcrete and plastics and all these things, I was like, this all comes from the same plant. Like, mm. how does that work? Like, really? Mm, yeah. And she gave me some seeds to try and I picked up the hempcrete brick and I was like, this is amazing. So I went home and did a lot of Google research. And at the time I just had a knee reconstructive surgery. So I had a lot of time on the couch. So I was there with my remote and watching a lot of YouTube and filling my brain with all these different things that hemp could do. And then I finally went and bought, bit the bullet and went to the health food store and bought some hemp seeds some hemp protein powder and some hemp could oil. Did you get that in 2016? You could. You could go to the health food shop and you could get it, but it did have a big, at this time at the, in history, it had a big uh, sticker on the front of it that said not for human consumption. consumption. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it was quite Classic. confusing. It's at a health food store and yet you're not supposed to eat it, but you could make a, a nice face scrub with it. So that's that's ah, what they put okay, on the front genius. there. There's a big sticker and it was quite so. smart because they put a... A, a, a picture or a map of the world and it highlighted Australia as the country, the only country in the world where you couldn't consume it as food. <laughs> nice. But in the rest of the world, you're allowed to. It's like, wow. so where there's these poor Australians. S that's since changed. Uh, so that really fueled, well, I, I bought it, tried it, and I started implement, implementing it into my diet and I was probably six weeks into eating, using hemp and something flipped in my brain. It was like I just had more energy. I had clarity of thought. I had... Um, I'd lost weight. I was feeling mm. good. My knee was getting better. The doctor was even saying, you, you, you're progressing really well. What are you doing? Oh, well, I said, really, I'm the only thing that's uh, doing my rehab, but I'm eating hemp. And he said, you're doing what? I said, eating hemp. And he said, oh, look, I don't want to know what you're doing. Just keep doing whatever you're doing. It's obviously working. So this got my brain ticking. You know, hemp is this amazing plant. You, 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 <coughs> we're not allowed to really buy it for food, but you can eat it for food. And at this stage... FSANS, Food Standard Australia New Zealand, had already quantified it and qualified it as a very healthy, nutritious food mm -hmm. years before that. It was John Howard and his infinite wisdom that decided that we don't want to let the Australian public eat this healthy food because it's confusing. We don't want to confuse that between pot. They, they might think We're too pot. dumb here. It's We're problem. Very, uh, dumb people in Australia. So, yeah, so the rest of the world can eat hemp seeds, but we weren't quite smart enough to be able to distinguish between, oh, you can eat this part of it, but you, this part might get you high. It's weird because, I mean, it'd be incredibly fibrous, right? Hemp would be incredibly heavy. Heavy fiber. It's lots of fiber, lots of omega fats, omega-3, yeah. 6, and nine, which are all and very, protein. Like, and it's protein. literally like a perfect su like supplement. I don't know why the everything. state would stand in the way of, of people eating it. It uh, blows my mind, and th this was the reason why the, John Howard came out and said we don't want to confuse people. So whether that was the reason why, or you know, there's some other agenda going on there. Um, mm. So mm -hmm. who benefits from hemp as food being illegal? Who benefits? From, well, well, I mean, the industries that the industries that are, are still running. So yeah. your wheat, your sugar, what, what, you know, all those oh, kind of and, foods. And, and well. that's yeah. your answer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that that maybe that was that was part of it. But that just blew my brain out. And I swear to God, I was in my house and I was eating the food. I was feeling great. And this was a real thing that you're not allowed to eat it. 
and I just thought something had to be done about it. So I, I actually rang up the company at the time. It was Hemp Foods Australia. I, I rang them up and I've seen them. Yeah, yeah you would have seen them. The, they were the, pretty much the only brand Australian brand mm-hmm. um, here. So I rang them up and said, "Hey, look, I love your stuff. I love hemp. It's really great. I want to work for you guys." And they're like, "No, we don't Damn. have any jobs for you. But what you can do is you can take our product and you can sell it at the markets." Yeah, I see. So that's pretty much what I did. I bought some some hemp seeds and some hemp oil with a little bit of money that I had at the time and took it to the markets and just started telling people, hey, did you know that you can eat this? And it was so funny too because at the markets at that time, you know, people that didn't know about hemp thought it was cannabis and yeah. I was selling. They were little, oh, no, no, I don't want to get did you high. Get cops ever coming by? No, I had cops walk past and sort of look at me, but they didn't, never really came up and did anything, but a lot of looks from people. So yeah, you'd have people right. walk past and I'd have a big, big cannabis leaf or hemp leaf <laughs> behind me and yeah. they'd sort of walk past and they'd look and then they'd do a double take and go, is that guy really just selling weed here in the middle of the of the market? You know, and they come on, can you do this? Or, you know, can you do me a fitty bro? <laughs> yeah, oh, the amount of times we've had that ask, it's just ridiculous. So <laughs> so that was the platform. You make I, a meme. Exactly. <laughs> It was, it was just, it, it, it was one of those, and it still is. I mean, we still have that. We still have people coming up and yeah, don't realize yeah. it's not as, not as much as it was. So yeah, that was pretty much how we start, how I started. I just, at the markets, teaching people about hemp mm-hmm. and what it can do. And Hey, did you know it's really high in omega fats? Those things are really important. Your brain's made out of fat, your skin cells, your joints, they need mm-hmm. omega fats. And this stuff grows here in Australia really quickly. Like yeah. within 120 days, you can have a plant. It grows pretty much in every continent around the world. Super important too, because we, we have such heavy omega six diets in we in this do. country we do and that was that was i think what i had a pretty good diet and it was only until i started eating the hemp seeds and i'm pretty sure in my mind it was the omega fats that actually really made the difference and gave me that clarity of mind yeah, because i was yeah. already juicing and having green barleys and all that right, sort of stuff right. but yeah the omega fats wasn't in my i didn't really quite realize how important they are yeah. even though it's in the name essential fatty acids that makes sense the yeah. word essential that would kind of give it away that the reason why they call it essential fatty acid is because it's essential yeah yeah. you need to have them yeah. you know your body can't manufacture them so you've got to get them from either fish or some uh, you know eggs or you know, avocados things like that you need to get them from somewhere and hemp is a good place so and it's easy to grow you can mm. yeah so we've been telling people that for a long time and the journey has gone for the last four years so since then we've kind of developed our own products i've um I have a big passion for hemp crate. That was kind of my, that was really where I want, I've been wanting to go from the beginning, but it was kind of a hard place to go. Not many people were doing it and really not anybody was really doing it. Yeah, right. Um, well, they were, they were, I, take, I take that back. Clara from the hemp masonry company. I don't know if you guys have spoken to her, but she's pioneered a lot of the hemp crete stuff here in Australia. Mm. They've done quite a few builds. And so she was running courses. I'm not sure if she's still running courses. So we did some, I did some courses with her and then, sort of took it from out from there so no, hempcrete absolutely um is one of those things once you discover it you're like that that that's a real thing yeah it's it's fire redundant right fire, yeah fire like, fire resistant, resistant. Yeah, it's, yeah it's fire like, resistant mold resistant like eco-friendly like everything you could ever imagine like as a sustainable product and yet it's not like massive and well, you're like what the fuck's going on that's what i mean like you only need about an about two acres of land mm-hmm. to grow enough hemp to build yourself a house yeah. like a three bedroom house so the two acres, and that's in 100 days so and at that same time what's actually happening is those plants are pulling carbon out of the air mm-hmm. sequestering yep. it in the stalk and you take that and you lock it up into the walls of your house so that's you a lot better than concrete which is the whole process of of creating cement. It's, isn't cement. it strange that there's so much that revolves around the cannabis plant that just like needs to be in our reality and we would have such a better, healthier world. Well, the fact that we're talking about it right now, like maybe if I ever built a house, I, I would just build it out of hempcrete because I, I knew that it was a way better material and it could work. And what's um, pricing? That's that's definitely something I'd have to... So at the moment, it's pretty comparable only because it, it's comparable in that like a normal build, you, you're not using, uh, with a normal build, you've got your bricks, your plaster, your stud. When you're doing a hempcrete, generally you don't have that brick wall, the veneer yeah. on the outside. You don't have the plaster on the inside. It's just a whole monolithic structure around yeah, the so actual stud. So you save on that end on that sort of labor and, and skills, but it is kind of quite um, labor intensive. 
you know, you've got a few people mixing, you've got a few people carrying it, you've got to tamp it down. Um, I was always like, I'm looking at alternative building. I was a big fan of the whole Earthship. I don't know if you know Earthships where they get tires yeah, yeah. and they fill them with. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, love that whole concept those. and I did a lot yeah, of research yeah. in that, but they are even three to four times more yeah. uh, labor intensive and, yeah. and doesn't tick all the boxes as Hempcrete does. So, right. as far as, you know, sequestering carbon, this. Could you whole, synthesize those ideas? That are kind of found in the two together into tires. Oh well, you know, I mean, I think people do do that. I think people do have like walls with the tires, and then yeah. you know, hempcrete around that. Oh, I've, yeah. I've seen people do that. There was some builds that have been done in North Queensland where they've kind of integrated the two together. Awesome. Because, uh, from my understanding, earthships don't work as well here in Australia just because of the climate. They're the more humidity just, or whatever. Yeah, the humidity and things like that. Whereas hemp is actually really well suited for this because it's so breathable i don't know if you guys have ever been into a hempcrete house but it's a totally different feel it feels mm. amazing you walk into one and it just it's like walking into a cave but oh, i was about to say that yeah it's a bit like the alice uh, not alice springs um the opal mine town cooper Pedy. cooper Pedy. yeah it's a little bit like that it really is because it's it, well i mean it's apparently it's the silica in the um in the hemp and the um uh, the, the 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 lime the calcium and the lime there's a reaction that happens between those two and it's actually g going back to calcium carbonate which is stone so it's actually turning back into stone over wow. time it's pulling carbon out of the air and it locks it up so it's actually over time it takes you know, up to so, 99 years or 100 years so, for it to completely so cure my, <laughs> um, so like my thinking if it takes that long does that mean it's effectively getting stronger and better as time goes one would think that yeah and, and, and in saying that there are houses like there's a, there's a house in Japan that's been built over 300 years ago that is, is still, still standing. standing and you look yeah. at Japan as high high seismic activity you know there's volcanoes yeah. and all that, all that sort of stuff so that's it's really still it's still there so and it's made of hemp made of hemp wow yeah, yeah it's hemp cool. is really integrated into Japanese culture but they don't even know it no they really like, don't they they don't well, understand that like uh like a lot of that from j just a friend that was there and he was telling me because he's in the hemp space they have heaps and heaps of clothes but they don't regard that as cannabis it's like no yeah and i think that was the influence of the americans back from prohibition they sort of the americans basically said you know we're not we're we're, we're outlawing it and everybody else has to yeah because it's mm. such a good plan and you can do so much with it we want to we want i don't know i don't know exactly it exactly. comes yeah. back to the whole cotton thing. yeah there's a yeah there's a lot of different arguments with the cotton the paper it was you know it was just prohibition the people that were doing prohibition they needed something so they just outlawed that they tried alcohol and everybody rioted it's a good way and to keep people in line exactly and yeah. in, in some ways it it kept uh you know tensions up when they needed to be up in the cold war um, and now that you have the US kind of like, you know, they've triumphed in that whole conflict, well, they get to set the international law. So we still have those laws that are stupid. Exactly. Um, and I guess you can see it's weird because they're this country of freedom, but they have their own legacy of alcohol prohibition as well. So, you know, a lot of this stuff has been imported from over there for various reasons, cultural panic and shock, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, racial tensions and shit. I yeah. wouldn't believe that. No way. <laughs> really? <laughs> Is that really a thing? Like, do you really think racism exists in America? You gotta be no, kidding me. Really. Like, no, no, I'm not sure. About like, that. Nah. Never. <laughs> uh, it's been an interesting fucking week or two, hasn't it? Like, what the fuck is going on? I think we're just all of the stuff that has been, Brewing. you know, systematically ignored for such a long time is finally coming to the surface and we can't ignore it anymore. No. You know? Mm. We just need to process it and work out what to do with it. Yeah. And people are starting to reflect and I think it's good. In it's going to be it's really good. Yeah. How, how many years do you think it is before like the number one grown crop on the planet is hemp? Because it's, it's going to happen. And unless we all like get killed. What is it right now? Is it corn or wheat? I think it'd be corn. It's uh, sugar, isn't it? No, maybe. Wheat. Well, actually, probably wheat. I'd yeah. say it's probably wheat. I mean, corn is the thing. That yeah, that's people corn, often think glucose, that sugar. Corn, sugar. Glucose, yeah, high yeah. They're all it's up not, there. And they're really up there. Too. Yeah, well, part of our motto was, you know, we were hoping that we would like to see hemp replace at least 50% of the wheat and sugar in yeah. Australia. Yeah. I think, and I think that would have a flow-on effect as well because if we could just take some of the sugar and some of the white flour out of our diets, we may have a different mental shift, a different perception of what's actually going on. And if you mm -hmm. integrated some things like omega fats and some good proteins and some good minerals, you would feel different. And like, you know, if you had a, a hempcrete house and you were living in a comfortable environment and you were wearing... Had a garden maybe. Yeah, you had a garden and, and you had like comfortable clothes that were breathable and you were eating good healthy food, 
maybe that would change the way you acted and the things that you did. So that's like a yeah, shift in values almost completely. So if you went back to, let's say 1937, before we took away the whole kind of like hemp and we put the taxes on, imagine where the world would be right now. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, would we be in this predicament that we are mess. right now? No exactly. So, yeah. So uh, it'd be nice to be able to, to bring it back to where it should be. And, mm. Yeah, it just, I still can't get over the fact that you can do so much with one plant. I mean, there's some yeah. great like, plants out there that do things like bamboo and you know, there's, you know, um, flax is, it makes beautiful linen and it's good for you as well. But hemp it just ticks every single box. I mean, that's why I call it the global hemp movement because at the time it felt like there really was a movement. And I think there's been movements throughout time, but mm. they seem to sort of get, gather some momentum and then... I don't know. Dissipate a, a bit. Dissipate or whether there's a clandine, clandestine assault on us that tries to you know, push us away or throw something else on top of us. But yeah, I think it's... Um, it's getting a little too undeniable, I think. What do you think will happen with New Zealand so soon? I mean, what September. happens if they legalize cannabis in general? Does that open up the potential for, you know... That, that hemp space in Australia, that kind of a space in Australia to expand? I would love to see that. We would love to see. I mean, every time you hear like a celebrity or a country taking it on board, you would hope that people go, oh, wow, they're doing it. Maybe we can do it as well. You know, the hundredth mm. monkey, once the hundredth monkey does it, then we all kind of do it. You would like to think that that's going to happen. Oh, yeah. Um, I suppose some of the concerns you have in the medical cannabis or cannabis sort of the way it works, some of the medical cannabis... <coughs> is either a synthesized version of it and then that comes out and people use it and then they go, I tried that and it didn't work and the medical cannabis doesn't work. So, yeah, yeah. that's a bit of a, a it's concern. Not the whole spectrum but stuff. It's, once again, it's doing things like this and having people like yourselves and, and people that are educating and giving information out there so people can really take it on board. I think that will be the keystone that will help yeah, bring it I here. Agree. I agree. Definitely. So yeah, New Zealand, that's going to be a good thing for us if it happens. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of I, I'm hopeful, end. but I've talked we've talked to Abe, he runs uh, the Cannabis Museum in um, Christchurch. Um, really cool dude, but like he talked about New Zealand has a very strong conservative population because your know, non-conservatives have moved over here because there's no work there <laughs> and everything's so expensive. So the question is do the rich people of New Zealand want to get fucked up <laughs> yeah and uh, to be honest like, they're the gonna, right way they're gonna need money so it's a really they're, 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 they're shooting themselves in the foot because there's a yeah. massive industry that can be made instantly huge amounts of money instantly. it's already been proven in places like colorado yeah. and, and and canada and the rest of it so i mean it's it's it would be crazy not to they're also um, a step ahead of the of the u.s on so many other issues why not just like one more yeah one more. who's that oh uh, new zealand oh yeah you know the thing about uh, just into ardern after COVID and, uh, you know, all the shootings and you know, everything that's kind of happened in that space of time, the way that they've responded to everything, even when it comes to like, you know, um, I guess moving away from, you know, I guess a, a, a commitment to carbon emissions into the future, like they've basically ended oil and gas exploration. They have. Yeah, yeah and coal exploration all throughout the, the nation, which is... You just don't see that in Australia, right? Like, it's not what we would do. Um, and I think that the weird thing about New Zealand is that they kind of have... They have a conception of what needs to be done into the future, and I hope that that triumphs over the kind of conservative tendency, mm -hmm. you know? So that, that is my hope, but who, who knows? It'll be... I hope for that too. Yeah, she, yeah. They're yeah. kind of like that one kind of English-speaking Western country that kind of is leading the way, even though they're tiny. They're really kind of pushing forward with like all of that. And, you know, it's beautiful because they're such a close neighbor. I think they have an impact on just like, you know, the way that we talk about Scott Morrison yeah. side by side with Jacinda. And she may not be the best leader. We may not be able to rely on those people to save the world. But the comparison is night and day just because one is actually you know, a good messenger and communicator knows how to speak to the public and how to address issues. Oi, how good's that? How good's what? Yeah, that, you know, oh. Scott Morrison's classic line. I'm oh, not even looking oh, at it. How, how good? How good's how good? that? Like, Scott, how good's that? Yeah, that's that's all I know Scott Morrison for. It's like, oh, how good's that? What about him shaking hands <laughs> with people that he doesn't... <laughs> didn't even want to take his hand. He sort of grabbed it. <laughs> oh, but like, just such a strange bloke. Very deluded, strange bloke. I think at the end of the day, you know, um, 
There might be some people in the Liberal Party who have a deep belief in everything that they say, but for the most part, they're kind of hired actors. Um, and I, I can see that, especially for someone like Scott Morrison, because he just feels like someone who's been... Manufactured. Yeah. Like, like um, that ad, I think it was an ABC thing, or whoever did it, it's on YouTube, we watched it, like the, creating, the creation of ScoMo, um, like how they branded Scott Morrison. And it's like, when you watch that, you're like fuck like you've just like taken that red pill like i I, I now see you for what you are to the core uh but anyway classic australian politics yeah it's so far and away from what people experience that's the fucking problem it's weird we're literally like at the u.s where it kind of feels like nothing matters in terms of like which side's going on postmodern garbage but then what gets even weirder though in australia no one even gives a fuck that's what adds to like it yeah, like, I mean, the whole thing with the Prime Minister, I mean, who, the last couple of Prime Ministers, we didn't even vote them in. They just sort of were there. One minute we had, we had Julia Gillard, and we had this. It's like, who's, who's next? Like, how did, they, how did they get in there? How, like, trust and faith in these institutions has just eroded over time. And I think it's been happening for decades. Like, I actually wrote something about this tonight. I think it's something... What are you publishing that, that on? Medium. Medium. Nice. Yeah, cool. So, I think the thing about, like, the the main problem that I have with like entering into kind of these discussions with people often is is that like how do you make it relate to what they care about because you know i think a lot of the reason why you have people in canberra who can make unscrupulous corrupt decisions is because there's a broader apathy that is encouraged like distraction is encouraged for sure definitely Uh, apathy um (laughs) people without the knowledge and the willingness to go and find out and not wanting to take responsibility Mm. that that in itself yeah yeah and i i mean there's i think a lot of reasons as to why that happens because it's right in our faces and so on and so forth but you know it'll be really cool if we could learn to i think the internet is something that actually empowers us to at least have access to information and what we do with that information is up to us but like that could be a potential for us to kind of move out of this it's just strange we have access to information but there's so much sides to the information right but i think that's a good thing because at one point we're all like oh yeah there's just a truth and there's a false and we now believe and and kind of know that there's so many different sides to the story and objectivity isn't something that someone can just pull out of their fucking ass and a lot of the time people are just making up as they go along. In fact, that's a pretty 100%. common strategy. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, you, politicians are constantly changing their words from one day to the next. Oh, yeah, it's no good for you. It's good. I mean, if, oh, I don't want to use any names, but there have been politicians at one minute saying, we're not, no, no cannabis, it's a gateway drug. And the next thing, oh, yeah, we're going to be encouraging Australians to be growing it and yeah. exporting it. <laughs> really? I it's heard you last week saying that it's no way that's going to be happening in the next thing. So they really, I don't see it happening as a top-down approach. I see it happening yeah. through the people. Always, man. It's always going to be through the people. It's it's going to be people that take it on board, willing to use it, do something with it. Global create movement. Something. Exactly. It really is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a global, global movement. Getting some noise there. Yeah, yeah. some interference. <laughs> it's a little bit of interference. Yeah, I, I see it's, it, it's, it's got to be through the people, you know, and... Oathman. Yeah. There's something about being able to bring it back down to that level because, yeah, like you say, they don't have the ultimate power. If people rallied their, themselves, then they could make this happen. And people do make this happen even when it's illegal. A bit like we were talking earlier. <clears throat> There's so many avenues for people to find their own way in this the most frustrating thing i think with cannabis is you know we want to rally together over the whole thing but like we all feel like we'll be attacked as soon as we do well i I, we went to a i went to a um a protest back in 2016 just when i started it was for legalizing cannabis medical cannabis and it was at the front of parliament house in brisbane and i turned up there all eager and mm. ready to go i even had hemp seeds that i was giving out to people we were, don't eat them just look at them rub them on your face you know because back then you couldn't you know mm. and i was really disappointed with the people that turned up it was like maybe a hundred people and i knew that it was like people all around us white collar workers that mm. were and the people that were there were just 
that, that were beautiful people, but they didn't represent the total population of people that actually do for sure. use yeah. and use it for a reason. There were a lot of white collar people up there that weren't willing to come down and actually stand right. up and do it. They just because that would mean risking their job, risking their job, their identity, and all those things. Because of that. They don't because they're af they're afraid of what's going the, the the incarceration, yeah. and that's the thing we've been <laughs> we've been criminalized, demonized, and this is the other thing too. Like politicians that have been saying no, 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 and been locking people up, they're now going to turn around and go oh we made a mistake we've got to let those people out well, we should let yeah. those people out you're gonna have know? to pardon them and yeah and all the doctors wrong. have gone oh no it doesn't actually do anything those people have probably killed thousands of thousands of people just from restricting the access of giving them an opportunity to try it yeah um yeah so there's a lot of people that are gonna have to eat their words and did you see the the report that came out it was for the queensland government it was qpc and basically they said we should decriminalize this is a you know, a board a committee that the, the Queensland government, government has set up. Yeah. It's independent, but they come up with their own policy-based decisions, like, you know, evidence-based. Um, and ultimately what they said was just, we should de decriminalize all drugs because it's such a massive toll on our incarceration system here in Queensland. It's the nonviolent drug offenses it's are massive. just, yeah, like a huge expense. Mm -hmm. um, and beyond that, there's all of these public health concerns and blah, 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 blah. So... They, they came to the government with that. The government didn't even let, like, the parliament hear that. They basically said, we're just going to move on to the next motion. Mm. Um, and I think that shows that, you know, there's such a deficit when it comes to um, relying upon those kinds of people for evidence-based leadership. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not... Mm. It's not necessarily gonna happen just because you want it to happen. My blood is literally know? boiling, and I just want to like punch like Anna Palaszczuk. Anastasia Palaszczuk. Anastasia Palaszczuk. Yeah, wow. she could be a Disney princess. Jesus Christ. I think she actually changed it from Palaszczuk to Palaszczuk because she lives in Queensland. She wants the bovins to pronounce it. Palaszczuk. I'm not even kidding. Because you look at the the spelling of it, it's Palaszczuk. <laughs> it is. And the traditional pronunciation is Palaszczuk. Everyone else who goes by Palaszczuk is Palaszczuk. But for her, it's Palaszczuk because it's too difficult for Queenslanders. No, Palaszczuk. I, the one that's really hard, quite honestly, is the one in um, New South Wales. Um, how do you pronounce her name? Um, Gladys Berejiklian. Berejiklian. Like, that's just insane. <laughs> I don't know. It's I think true. they've just picked it's very our, Australian. Name. Our, our, our premiers have yeah, been picked yeah. to be really Plus. hard to pronounce, so you can never find them. Like, <laughs> you couldn't even call them out because you couldn't They're say their obscure. name. It just sound ridiculous. That's funny. But <laughs> it, 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 the whole thing with the protest that you were talking about, like how you had a hundred people turn out, I had the exact same thing happen. Oh, when was that? Like a year or two ago? Like I think it was mm -hmm. a four twenty sort of thing around that time, and it was outside same Parliament, dynamic. and all you had was kind of the Liberal Democrats put it on mostly. Yeah, what good the... dudes, but weird dudes. Yeah, they don't make like they don't have a lot of political allies, to be honest. Yeah, so that might have contributed to it. But... Yeah, it was it was a bit disappointing. So it just it so it showed me that, that you know there really is a need for what we're doing as far as you know. I mean, the whole idea behind the global hemp movement is really to try and educate, inspire, and distribute all things hemp. That's part of our little motto. And the way that we, you know, the way I sort of thought about doing that was, well, you know, we don't, you can make 50,000 products. They've said you make 50,000 products out of hemp. And, you know, these are everyday kind of products like soap mm. and shampoo and, and, you know, creams, face creams and food. So you can give that, you can give a bar of soap to someone and then go, oh, wow, that's not the devil's lettuce. It's not going to kill me. It's not going to make me high. It's just going to clean it's, me. It's just going to clean me. And it's mm. made from a nice plant that, you know, doesn't get sucked out of the ocean and it's not, you know, oil wells drilling yeah. or anything like that. It's just some soap and it's made here in Australia by Australian people. How do you explain for Australian that people. to people who have never done it before? Like, do you put it on the labeling? Do you have that face to face kind of thing? So like, we've been operating out of markets pretty much for the last four years, pretty much. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, face to face, giving people samples here, have some seeds, eat yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of people that look at me and go, oh, no, no, I can't do that. Or I don't want to go. <laughs> Yeah, so it's basically just giving it to people and saying, hopefully they'll try. They'll try it and have a have a go. Just try it. See what happens. Wipe it on your face. See what you know. How has um, COVID affected you guys in terms of no markets, or has markets still continued? Yes. Yeah, so the, the the main market that we do up in Brisbane that still operated, but it pretty much it 
the whole vibe there changed. So we sort of, yeah. we pulled back and we haven't been there for about oh, six or seven weeks, but we are going back. We've had a few people asking us to come back. And so... Is yeah. that the Rona or... The Rona. Yeah, coronavirus. Yeah. Yeah, well, that sort of impacted. We sort of... Did it let you kind of... I'm curious, like, did it let you just regroup? Kind of refocus? To be recovery? honest, I was thinking, oh, this will be great. Some isolation. I'll have some time off. We'll be able yeah. to get a few things done. But it didn't really kind of work out that <laughs> way. It was just... It was... Yeah. It was really busy. It was mm. good. So a lot, of, and we're good. lucky too. A lot of people that we were coming to the markets came over to the website. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that That's was really, really cool. good. Um, yeah. And we're, we're getting good feedback with some of the stuff that we're making now. So That's awesome. Are yeah, you guys that making is. it yourselves or do you have a few factories? How's that? Yeah. So we make some of it ourselves. We have, um, I have a, a factory down in um, northern New South Wales at the foothills of Mount Warning in Mwoomba. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful area, so, yeah, sacred beautiful area. Lady. We have a lady down there. She's been making like creams and potions for quite some time, and put a selection together of what we like. With a, hemp is the majority of it, and this could have came about because we were selling a product, we were the Hemp Foods Australia product, and we didn't realize at the time, but it looks like an Australian product. It's called Hemp Foods Australia. The name mm. of the, the business is Hemp Foods Australia. So you assume. But when you turn around the back and you actually read a little logo that Made says, in. you know, how Made much in. of this, how oh, much, how much. They've, they've changed the labeling now. It's not like, where is it made in? It's just how, how much? much of it's made in Australia. And yeah. the bar was like zero, zero of it came from Australia. It was all from China. So right. the seeds are from China. And look, I don't have anything against China, but no. I just believe that, you know, we're here in a country, it's a big country. We've got the ability to grow and, and manufacture and it'd be good that we have Australian produce. Yeah, totally. And so when I found out that the product that we were selling was Chinese, even though it was called Hemp Foods Australia, we, we, um, we decided to find our own supply. So we've got Tasmanian seed, um, with the seeds pressed into oil, cold pressed into oil, and we get the protein powder from that. And That's brilliant. Yeah, it's really good to have, and I think I I believe you can taste it. We've had we've done the Pepsi challenge a few times, and we've always come back with our seed being a creamier, nicer kernel. So we're happy with that. How do you prepare a seed into? Yeah. So it's it's not an easy process. It's a very big machine, a hulling machine, to take that tiny little shell off that seed, and yeah. and really it's a process. It's not an efficient process because if you take a ton of seed, you probably only get about 400 kilos of hulled seed. The rest right. is all shell. It's right, about six, right. anywhere from 600 and to 700 kilos of shell. The rest of the world though, you're allowed to eat whole seed, aren't you? Well, we, we can get your whole seed, but it's got to be roasted. We can't right. sell a whole, we, I'd love to be able to like, like an alfalfa sprout to be yeah. able to just sprout hemp seeds and sell them in little, like have them in a little pack off of that because the have nutrition seen, of that would um, be amazing. I think it's in Europe. I think it was like in uh, uh, the Netherlands in Aldi or Little, either one. Um, they were selling hemp plants oh my God. like in the shelves like basil. That'd be so no cool. It's so cool. Just picking your own hemp plants that would yeah. be amazing. That would be just, yeah, that's where it should be. That's where, that's where, that's mm. the goal to get here to Australia. So, yeah. and I think we, to be honest, asking the question like how quick is it going to change here? I'd like to say it's going to change really soon, but I think there's still going to be a, a bit of education around it. And sure. I think it's happening. Reaching it's going to happen out. quicker than we think. It is. But it's still going to be a, a bit of a process. I, I think, did we pick 2026? <laughs> yeah, I put around 2025, 2026, because I think it'll take around five years, yeah. five, six years. Yeah, and I thought it was 10 years when I started. Yeah. So yeah. that would that would, that put would, it in the, that would put it in the bulk box. When so. I kind of started with this, I went through like that whole entrepreneurial journey of like, who the fuck am I? Like, what 100%, am I? Definitely. Right? We all do that. Mm -hmm. And then you watch all those videos and they're like, and I watched one with an entrepreneur I really like, uh, Patrick Bet David. Don't know if you've watched Valuetainment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. Awesome yeah, he, dude. Yeah, really, awesome. Really very, cool I've been dude. getting into him quite a bit lately. Yeah. yeah. Um, his content lately, he's awesome. I love that he's actually getting lefty kind of ideas on. It's Alternative like, perspectives. Wow, yeah, you're not a fucking hack. Um, hack. Yeah, you, you're someone who's actually a genuine cunt. Yeah. But anyway, okay. shout out aside, um, he had this whole thing. It's like, are you prepared to stick it out in this industry for 10, 20, 30 years? And I'm Good like, point. I sat there and I like really thought, it's like, do I want to be involved with cannabis for 10 years where there's a chance that I might not even make anything like substantial? Like it could just be me trying, 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 trying. And I mean, that's kind of what it has been. But, it is. Um, and I like really have to think about it. It's like, it could literally be illegal for 10 years and like there'd be no market, no nothing. And it's mm. like, I entered a bit later than you, but it's still the same kind of, it hasn't changed that much. There are a lot of no. other industries that are less risky, but I think that this 
cannabis industry has such a high reward, not just for the entrepreneurs, but the social change benefits. for sure, definitely. Yeah. And there was times in my life where I was questioning what I what I was doing. I've had a varied past. I've had different professions, and and I've got a few different skill sets. But I've kind of questioned, you know, there's times in your life, you know, am I, am I supposed to be doing this? Or what am I supposed to be doing with my life? Or who am I? Yeah. Mm. I haven't asked that question in the last four years. Nice. I really That's haven't cool. because we've seen so many amazing things happen with... You're on that path. Yeah, kind of it, just transformations. Just even mm. in the, the, the short years that I've been involved, there's been other businesses that have started off, you know, people making, you know, hemp, 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 um, hempalicious. Mm. Hempadelic, sorry, hempadelic. They make these amazing treats, and um, the the guy I was telling you about with the, the making the um, beehives out of hemp yeah. crete and all oh, these that's like, awesome. just people going out there and getting inspired and going, oh wow, if this plant can do this, what can I do with it? And that to me is just like, yeah. So I, I always see it as, you know, I, <laughs> I'm not a real good businessman. Making money is <laughs> was never. It was always about just if I could go out there and talk to people and and they understand what hemp is then i know mm. my job is done mm. you know so if we can walk down the street and have a hemp seed and you can see it everywhere well, then it's like well there's nothing more for me to do i don't have anything to do here but yeah. when i started it was really like i'm beating my head against the wall because no one understands this stuff's illegal and it's amazing <laughs> why are we not doing anything yeah, with it? and yeah. it's slowly getting to that point where well you know you guys are here and there's more people talking about yeah. it and you can get it in the health food stores although the last couple i've been to there hasn't been any hemp seeds so well i mean mm. that's a really good thing for you yeah well exactly get if you need something get on the global hemp movement website and grab some so yeah, just ding, set ding, them ding. up with the wholesale and get them involved exactly so right. yeah we're actually talking about talking with flannery's and a few other places that flannery's is all right yeah the oh, problem so with those um, stores we have an though, article oh, they're expensive we have an article they are. for seeds they are. um are you are you on it What's the global hemp movement? Have we? We should add you to an article. Yeah, we'll pop you in a few things. Um, well, we left definitely. you some things to try, so try yeah, them and see what you think first okay. before okay. you start we'll going all these. Cheers. Well, actually, we'll be living together, <laughs> so it'll be even easier. Yeah, yeah. Shout Enjoy. out, Fab Headquarters is moving next week. Oi! <laughs> We're about to work twenty four seven. Mitch, are you fucking ready? Oh my god. Um, yeah, <laughs> I did not agree to this. It's either going to be the greatest thing for you guys, or it's going to be it's going to destroy us. To make us. Demise to you. I actually no, think I don't think so. I actually right. think it'll be fucking sweet. Um, there's something about being in the same space that gives projects and energy. Mm -hmm. Also, being able to leave into my own room is a big thing. Like. You know, oh, for sure. I, I'm holed up with my family right now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm still at my parents' house. So even if I'm entering into a new dynamic with new weird things, it's still going to be like a level up from where I was. Definitely. Where... Definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be... That's really I'm really cool. excited to see the creativity that's going to come like out of like everyone around us because we've got just brilliantly creative people around us. Like It's, it's what we seem to attract. Um, for sure. It's... Um, Actually, speaking of attraction, one thing I was thinking and we've been talking about for a while, and I think this is something you guys are going to definitely want to get involved with, is we've been looking to, it was before COVID, we did a picnic where it was just the fab gang and stuff. It actually became a rainy day and we we're doing a photo shoot. It was kind of a mess. It was last minute. We just needed to get some photos done. Yeah, but been... we wanted to make it a thing every month, every two months where we go to a park, clean it up. Um, put on a barbecue, um, talk cannabis, like, you know, there'd probably be a little bit of smoke, not something excessive, you know, but kind of build it up as the community that's growing the entire thing. Um, For sure. Bring it through and then make it, the community build out of that. So then when we do do a protest, potentially that has already attracted a lot of people because there's a trust within all of us. It's a bit like Abe, the cannabis museum guy who at his university, he would just like have a, a day on Friday or something where he would smoke up in in the university grounds and that would be like it would be a 420 friendly campus as a result yeah so it's wow. kind of a culture shift yeah yeah so it's like can we do that could we um potentially be handing out flyers and information you know about hemp about cannabis about pgr you know like Definitely. to the walkers by have your stall for um, sure i really wanted to do like you know your classic sausage sizzle and um that can all be proceeds that can go towards something of our cause and all of that sort of stuff um and who knows maybe that will turn into its own little market 
the hemp expo was so fucking cool it's like could we make like a mini hemp expo every a couple months kind of pop up thing yeah, yeah definitely well we'd love to be involved with that for sure and you know i mean even even the local markets we found is a, is a great venue for that because people yeah, sure. are a little bit more raw at the markets yeah. they're real a lot more real if you create something or you give them something they're, they're not afraid to tell you right there and then i don't like that and you're like oh okay we'll go and try and make it better for you yeah. um maybe it's worth considering the, the old we markets. when yeah. I, when you were asking me about how i thought about starting fab part of the business idea that i actually had was to do a market store to yeah. sell some like of this shirt designs and maybe some grinders and stuff and then i started when we did the hemp expo how much we shit we got in with uh queensland health we didn't get into too much but they we weren't allowed to advertise some of our shirts because it promoted smoking just spooked yeah, you yeah, a bit yeah. like just these little restrictions that made it hard i was selling some we had some books on our table from a guy he, he's an australian but he had to go to america to write the book it was all about how to grow um beautiful book beautiful pictures and all that and how to clone and all that sort of stuff but yeah he wasn't allowed to sell that book in australia and he's like yeah, huh. come and give it we do it under is the that, is, under is the counter illegal? um no that's, that's suppression of information mm, and nah, there's an, there australia was an, doesn't have a first amendment nothing like that yeah, and there was true. another guy cog he's down in i know cog you know cog fucking love cog. he's a great guy i met him in I've um met him. Oh, where where are they it's at um uh, Kyogle. It was a Kyogle. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. I met Classic. him at the front of the post office and he gave me like a box of his DVDs. <laughs> and I'm yes. like, I want to go and distribute these, man, and Legends. tell people about it. It was like right at the beginning, it was like yep. bought them all and wholesale. We did this deal, like, did this deal out in the street. It was so. And he told me that he had the F, uh, the FBI, or the Australian a AFP, come to his house yeah, and yeah. have a conversation about the material that he's created and, you know, the whole story of him getting done with $16 million worth of weed or whatever it was. And it was just a handful of seeds because they classify each seed as $2,000 worth of puddle. Jesus. Yeah, and that was, he spent like... <laughs> that's what that uh every that bag would be fucking priceless i know right but that's that's yeah anyway great guys so yeah we we're distributing uh, that stuff but. we um we have an article about growing weed outdoors in australia but really all it is is in, uh, putting cog's video in it and like a text write up yeah right and it's just like listen to the expert <laughs> like yeah he shows you how to fully find a plot and so what to do and a plot. Yeah, it's changed like, by that video i um it's pretty cool when you were talking about like how you started getting like a little like involved with cannabis and like you started researching all the hemp and everything Mm. I had that same experience while I was at university. So I was studying IT yep. and I, I am dead certain of this. I read more content articles, like literature, like on cannabis than I ever did anything in my IT degree. All I was wow. using my library pass for like, you know, how you got access yeah, to your yeah, journals yeah. and stuff was just reading cannabis articles. I literally just had like a folder on my computer called like cannabis articles. It was like thousands and I just yeah. read through them and I'm just like, yep. Yeah, Yep, yep. I'm did, justifying like my habit. Yep, yep. Like. And did you have the vision that you wanted to grow it and you wanted to do this? Yeah, with it yeah, yeah. It's like you meet people and you, when the, the hemp bug bites you or the cannabis bug bites you, it's like you want to do everything. I When I started, mm. I was like, we want to have a farm. We want to make these and we want to do this and we want to grow that. And then slowly over time, you sort of find your niche in yep. the cannabis. And, and I believe everybody's got a place in the cannabis well, well like the, the growing world. Thing, me and the boys were like, boys, we got to do this. And we're like, planned out exactly how we never did it. Like, yeah, exactly. Never did yeah. it. But like, I watch more videos on growing than I did anything else. I reckon I'm an expert at this point when I've never even really done it. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, and it's just like, what? Like, that's that's outlandish. But it's like, how much time I put into looking at that? Well, people ask me at the markets, like, do you grow this? And I'm like, no, well, it's grown in Tasmania. And for one, I'm not a farmer. Like, I, that's not what I do. I'm better mm. at talking to people and explaining about yep. what it is, how it works, and trying it and giving people first experiences of it and showing you that it's not something to be worried about. It's not going to hurt you. It's actually going to be good for you. And been on the planet for hundreds of thousands of years we've developed a whole system to work with this plant you know like the whole endocannabinoid system yeah. we yeah so um yeah it, it, it's it's <laughs> It's interesting when you come across that. It's really. interesting once the passion hits. and Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, when they talk about finding your passion, like, just for myself, it was like, I just denied cannabis as the passion, right? Like, I always loved weed. I always said it, like, da-da-da-da-da-da. But it was just like, you, you kind of think because of the, like, how it's kind of bad, like, societally and all that, how it's looked on, you kind of just dismiss it right off. You're like, eh, it's just cannabis. Like, I'm getting high, but, like, I, li I, I like it, but, like, I can't commit myself to this. No, well, that <laughs> and that's what hemp, the hemp side of things changed it for me because, yeah, the, the cannabis, yeah, smoking it, that was great. And obviously I was self-medicating for quite some time not realizing it. But then mm. when I realized you could do all these other things and 
you know, the building of the houses is a big thing for me because I like to live in a nice house and, yeah. you know, I live in a townhouse and you can hear the people next door because the walls are thin. It's not and insulated. It's not insulated. I've got to sp spend heaps of money on air conditioning and I've got to spend heaps of money on heating. If I had have just built it out of hempcrete, that wouldn't be a situation. It wouldn't be a problem. Mm. You wouldn't hear the neighbours. They wouldn't hear us. And, you know, it's just <laughs> it, it, that to me is if you, and it's such a simple thing. Like it's, yeah. why, why can't we do this? So many like things, you just look at the world and you go, why do we do it that way? I, I can know, think of like 10 other ways to do it. You know? Yeah. Like, a lot more efficient. And I, I think the thing beneficial. I hate from people the most is like, oh, well, we've always done it that way. Why would we change? Oh man. Like, That's I don't the reason <laughs> right there. Cause we've been doing it. Good and point. There's a, it's exactly. <laughs> that just like destroys my mind. Like when that happens, like why is in my head? Z -z -z -z, and I'm just like, I don't compute. Like, yeah. It's funny too because you're like really trying to figure out why they think the way they think. Yeah, the, and then yeah. it's like that's almost inconceivable to you. <laughs> yeah, it breaks me, man. It breaks me because for my mind, I have to think of everything like where is that connection? How does that logic occur? I need the logic. Without it, my reality just shatters. It like, doesn't I'm like work. what, 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 how? Yeah, exactly. I relate. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> 100 uh, well, we're about 45. I think this would probably it's be a good, a good point podcast. to wrap it up. Yep. Um, Shout out your website, um, yeah, anything else yourself. that you want, plug yourself. All right. So we're at the globalhempmovement.com.au. That's for all your hemp and hemp related products. Well, we have a building uh, company, resoluteconstructionsolutions.com. Sick. So if you're interested in some hempcrete, some hemp Not building. Yet, but soon. Yeah, um, eventually. Yes. Yeah. And there's one other website, yes to hemp to have a look at as well. Yes to hemp.com. Yes that's, okay. that's some, that's some, one. some, yeah, you like that one? Yeah, that's, that's all right. right. I, I think so. It sounds pretty good. Yes to hemp. It's short and it's, um, yes to, you're it's not it's doubling hemp. up letters anywhere. No. And it's actually Y E S the number two. Oh, mm. even shorter. Nice. Yeah. yeah cool. It's so a number thing. I don't know. Web guy. Just, yeah. 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 yeah so uh, <laughs> that is pretty much what we're Instagram, Facebook's as well. Instagram handle global hemp movement at, at global hemp movement. Mm -hmm. And just when, just on the um, website, when they register, they say friendly Aussie buds and Aussie food. Exactly. So when you register for the Yes to Hemp website, if you put in there, how did you find out about this website, friendly Aussie buds, then we'll know how you found it. And we're just keeping our little community of people that are interested in hemp and hemp-related information. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Go check it out, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> thanks for having us, guys. Cheers. Yeah, thanks for coming on. See ya. Stay safe.